In the last stream, we were continuing to work on preparations for the Twilight Forest. We upgraded our Terra Steel armor with enchantments that we generated using this upgraded enchantment setup with the uh, pearlescent end shelves from Apotheosis. We then took those enchantments and placed them in the enchantment library also from Apotheosis, and combining all of those enchantments together, we then place them onto each piece of our Terra Steel armor to make these ridiculously powerful. And we also, thankfully, managed to acquire this uh, Creative Flight Trinket, which also allowed us to uh, add a Terra Steel chest plate to our setup, completing the set of armor and giving us even more protection. And then right at the end of the last stream, we also crafted this Manulin Rose Gold Cleaver, and it has been brought to my attention by the YouTube comments that there are in fact ways of getting even more modifiers for this weapon. So in the last stream, I mentioned the Draconic modifier, which allows you to add a dragon head to the sword to give it an extra modifier slot. Uh, and I believe we also used the golden apple trick where you can put a golden apple on and turn your ability slot into two modifier slots. However, it turns out that there are, I believe, four more ways to get extra modifiers. Uh, the first way is with a creeper head or any head I believe works, like if I got a skeleton head or a zombie head or maybe even a wither skeleton skull, I think basically any mob head will do the trick here. Uh, if you put that onto your tool, you get the recapitated modifier, which gives you an extra upgrade slot. On top of that, you can use a book and quill, which we should be able to make. Never mind. it turns out you can't make uh, a book and quill with black dye, it does specifically have to be an ink sack. And so uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make that without uh, finding some kind of squid, which we might find in the Twilight Forest if there's some, some surface water around. But uh, essentially, the book and quill does the exact same thing. You can put it on your sword and it will give you one extra modifier slot. On top of that, you can also get an end crystal. This guy right here, uh, normally used to resummon the end dragon. If you add an end crystal to your weapon, it will also do the exact same thing. It will give you one extra modifier slot or upgrade slot. And then finally, the last way that I believe you can add a modifier slot is with a music disc. And as luck would have it, we do have one music disc in the system here. I assume we got it when we had our cursed earth farm set up in a previous stream. But if you do this and this, you get the harmonious modifier which gives you yet another upgrade slot and so now we have a choice of what modifiers we want to add to the sword what further modifiers we'd like to add and i think really it's going to be either more power more damage with nether quartz or more speed with redstone the redstone doesn't add a ton of speed but even a little bit extra speed might be worth it and then the nether quartz of course is not addable, actually, because we've hit the maximum level. We've hit sharpest. We've already added uh, five upgrades worth of sharpness, so we actually can't put any more sharpness onto this sword. So, yeah, I think we'll just go really with um, a few modifiers worth of redstone here. I don't know how much redstone you can put on per modifier. I think I will leave one modifier slot empty, just in case I want to uh, add something else in the future. People might have suggestions. If you do, feel free to leave them in the comments if you're watching this. On, uh, on YouTube at some point, but this is now quite a bit faster, actually, and a reasonable speed considering how powerful it is, dealing over 20 damage per hit. And so, without further ado, let's head on through to the Twilight Forest. Now, the way the Twilight Forest works is throughout the forest, there are different boss fights, but the boss fights are usually gated behind other boss fights. And so you do have to fight the bosses in a particular order. Uh, if we open the quest book here, you'll see there is kind of a vague uh, linearity to the boss fights. For example, if I were to go and try and fight the Lich King right away, I wouldn't be able to do it. There's like an aura protecting him. I have to fight the Naga first before I can fight the Lich. And then the same is true for some of these later uh, fights as well. You have to do them in a certain order in order to be able to kind of unlock the next fights. Now, before we start fighting the Naga, which is right here, by the way, we do spawn right in like the Naga battle zone. Uh, but before we do that, I think it's going to be worth investing in a magic map. As the quest says here, it says to navigate a little easier, you can create a special map that will show you the locations of the bosses. You'll find ravens in the forest, glowberries in the caves, and you already have glowstone. So uh, this is made with paper and a magic map focus. The magic map focus is made from a raven's feather with torchberries and glowstone. Now, ravens should just spawn in 
the Twilight Forest. So if we do a little bit of flying around here, we should hopefully just find some ravens. Oh, I thought I heard a raven. Here we go. I was going to say my sword should be powerful enough to kill a, uh, a raven that has uh, five hearts in the top left there. Uh, now that we have that, we need to go and head down into a cave. So usually the Twilight Forest does have these like uh, cave entrances. And if we head down, we should hopefully be able to find some, um, some glowberries fairly easily. Here we go, torchberries. Uh, I misspoke there, but if we go ahead and break those, we have the torchberries. And I think that's basically everything. We should now be able to head back and uh, use some of the paper that we already have to craft up the, uh, the magic map. So boom, that gets us the magic map focus. And then from there, uh, we are just missing some paper, which I believe we can request. We can indeed start and start. And boom, we have the blank magic map. So now, if we head on back through to the Twilight Forest, try not to die right away to the Naga. If we look at the map here, right click, you'll see that it shows us where the bosses are. So right in the middle where we are, uh, there is the Naga. And there are actually two Nagas either side of us. Then there are four liches, I believe, those four uh, kind of skeleton skulls with crowns on. And then you can see there are a few more kind of on the edges. And as we fly further and further in any one given direction, we can kind of see and unlock more bosses. So that uh, red, uh, so that icon in the top right above the red patch of land, I believe that's the Hydra. We then got what looks like the Yergast, which is over in the top left there. Uh, but again, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. We don't really need this until we've fought both the Naga and the Lich, because both of those are fairly close to us. So I don't think this should be too difficult for us. I think, honestly, we've got our Terra Steel Sword. The hardest part about this is going to be making sure that we can actually catch him. I believe that this is a visual glitch, by the way. Um, I do have Optifine installed, and so... Normally, the Naga is like a fully-fledged snake. It's not just a head that flies around, although it's quite possible that you can only deal damage to the Naga by hitting it in the head. And there we go. The Naga is dead. That is definitely the easiest, I believe, of the fights that we have to do, uh, but that is that quest complete. We get some Naga scales, and we also get some uh, Venison Steak as well for completing that quest. And then there's also a quest here called Inventory Management. It says good old shulker boxes to help you with inventory management out there as well as a backpack. So now, yeah, let's head this way, and let's see if we can't fight the Lich. So having creative flight here does help a tremendous amount, because normally you have to work your way up through the tower. However... I believe that we should be able to just kind of head in right at the top floor. There he is. So I should have read the quest book first. In fact, you know what? We can, we can head out temporarily. The quest book does say right here, uh, next is the Lich King. At the start of the fight, he will have a magic shield that won't allow you to damage him. To break it, you'll have to reflect the end of pearl looking projectiles. His clones will attack you too and can't be killed. And then at the bottom, it mentions uh, some rewards that we get after defeating him. So to start with here, he's going to fire ender pearls at us. And I have to use my uh, subpar hand-eye coordination to fire these back. Maybe I... There we go. Okay. Maybe I, I don't know if I had to hit him or not to trigger the start here. He does have a few... Uh... Okay, so we got to hit these back. Kind of like a gas. We have to kind of fire these back at him. I don't know. I assume the real one is the one... Oh, actually, I don't know what the real one is. Okay, it's taken a while, but he's down to one shield left. I think this one with the one shield is the original, like the real Lich. It's kind of hard to tell because they're all on fire and they all look the same. But I think this one is the one that we want to uh, try hitting an enderpearl back to. Okay, I believe he is ready to be attacked. Hello, my friend. Please stand still. If you could stop teleporting, that would make my life a tremendous amount easier. I need my mouse sensitivity to be about, like, 600 times higher for this. He's doing so much teleporting. 
but he is dead. Nice. All right, that is the lich who is also taken care of. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly just dump a lot of this junk here into the uh, the shulker box that we were given. So next up on the list, I'm going to hold off on claiming these rewards yet, just because I don't think we need them and they're going to fill up our inventory. Uh, so now we have a choice. We can do the Minos Room, the Night Phantom, or the Alpha Yeti. Let's work left to right. We'll start with the Minos Room. It says there's a maze underneath a small hollow hill in the Twilight Swamp biome. Find it, and after defeating the Minos Room, eat Meef Stroganoff. Stroganoff? Eat Meef Stroganoff, which will unlock the Fire Swamp biome for you. So after we've done that, we unlock the Fire Swamp, which is where the Hydra is. So let us take a look at the map, which I've just put away into here. So I believe that it might be on the edge, kind of near the Hydra. I think it's over this way. You'll see there are like those little kind of green squares on the, uh, not, like above, below, and uh, to the left and right of the uh, of the Hydra. So I think right about here, that might be the, uh, the, the mountain, the little mount. Yeah, I think this right here. Yeah, this is what we're after. So this one is one of my least favorites because this one is a, a maze. Now, it probably would have been prudent for me to get some torches before coming here because torches do definitely make this significantly easier to navigate. But I believe that what we're looking for here is we're looking for a, a pathway down to the lower level of the maze. So the cool thing about having Shadow Step 5, I think it is, is that like none of these mobs trigger on us until we're basically on top of them. And then as soon as we walk away, they kind of untrigger again because that enchantment makes it so that they don't, they don't know that we're there. This here is what we're looking for. This room leads us down to the lower level of the maze. Now, I think we're looking for essentially the same thing again to go down to a third lower level. And then I think on that third lower level is where we'll actually find the, uh, the boss. Oh, never mind. This is, I believe, the, uh, the boss room. Here he is. I think this is maybe one of the easiest boss fights in, in human history. Like, he is dead, and we have done it. <laughs> and we got the Meef Stroganoff. Nice! So now all we need to do is make our way back out of this, uh, out of this maze, and, uh, and eat our, eat our Meef. I would say we can eat the, the beef. I don't know if I have to be hungry to eat this. It looks like I do. So temporarily, let's just, like, throw this on the ground. And then if we run and jump a bit, we can maybe get hungry enough to eat the Meef. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of uh, hunger available, let's eat the meef. There we go, fantastic. Uh, we really don't need to keep the rest of it, but as long as we've got space, we might as well go ahead and just dump it in uh, in here for now. There we go, we can keep all of our trophy heads. So now, let us see about fighting this Hydra, which I believe is just over by this mound over here. It totally is. All right, so this is tricky. Because they, the Hydra has heads that I cannot see. So I think, is it F3B? Hitbox is shown. Here we go. This is not the way this is meant to be played, I don't think. However, with <laughs> with Optifine on, I can't see the, the mob head. And this uh, F3B shows you the mob head. So this is definitely the, uh, the scariest boss. And that is the Hydra defeated. Uh, not the most interesting fight <laughs> in the world. I think maybe normally, uh, if you could see the heads, I think if you attack the head that's like firing, also I can press F3B as well to uh, turn that off. But I think normally, if you attack the mob head that is like trying to fire at you, you might deal more damage to it. Uh, but you can also, if you uh, want to just do it the way we did and just hit any of the, the hitboxes and that will seemingly slowly but surely deal damage. It's quite possible we'll have to come back and fight another Hydra in the future. Because in order to make fiery ingots, you need fiery blood and iron. And we're going to need, I think, quite a few fiery ingots to get a few ultimate ingots. And I don't think that we can make, like, molten fiery ingots. So we might want to come back with, like, a, um, a different sword that's got, like, looting a billion on it to try and get 
as much fiery blood as we possibly can. So next up, we have the Night Phantom and the Alpha Yeti. I actually don't know if I've done these two. I must have done the Night Phantom at some point because I've done the Year Guest. But I don't think I've done these two for Fornail. So the Night Phantom, it says, find a stronghold in the Dark Forest. To enter, you'll need to place any kind of boss trophy on the trophy pedestal. Uh, you can retrieve it as soon as the entrance unlocks. The boss can be found on the second or third layer of the maze. I have done this before. Uh, I lied. But uh, we need to find a, uh, a Dark Forest. And I don't think I see one on the minimap, although it might be one like down here. I don't know what that is. That could be what we're after. In fact, I'll head down that way. And if it's not, we can always continue heading uh, south until we find one. So this is an example of not being able to fight certain bosses until you fought other bosses. So up on the uh, like top left there is where the Yergast is. If I try and head this way, I start taking damage from the rain because I've not unlocked like that level of the, uh, the Twilight Forest yet or that area of the Twilight Forest, and we can't fight that boss yet. So you'll know the Dark Forest when you start seeing this, like, really dense treetop. This is what the uh, the Dark Forest looks like, named because if you go underneath it, it is real dark. Obviously, we've got night vision enabled, so it's a little less dark, but uh, basically, we need to head down into here. And then somewhere around here, again, looking at the map, we should find, yeah, this. So we need to find the entrance with a pedestal and then we place a trophy on that pedestal and that's going to unlock the maze for us ah here it is okay so uh, on the surface just to show how i found this there is stairs or there are stairs you can head down and then you enter this kind of mini maze which is uh, kind of a prerequisite for the next level maze and then eventually you'll find a room like this at which point you can place any boss trophy we'll do the hydra on here that opens that up, and at that point, we should be able to just take the trophy back and uh, stick it in our shulker box. And so now we need to head on down and work our way through the maze to try and find the boss. Again, I think, much like the previous maze, we want to head down wherever possible. I think this might be it. It totally is. So I think here we just have to kill all of these guys. We might have completed the quest already, but I'm pretty sure we need to kill all of these guys to get the trophy and maybe to continue on to the next uh, portion of the Twilight Forest. Again, they're a lot easier than I remember them being, but I think that's maybe because the, the shadow step is making it so they don't even trigger to us being around. And there we go, we've, we've cracked it. We'll take the trophy. I don't know if we need a lot of the other stuff that's here. We get some block and chains as a reward. So let's go see, guys, if we can't fight the, the Yergast. So I think I was wrong earlier. I'm pretty sure the Yergast is this way. Again, there's kind of a pattern in the Twilight Forest, like the Hydra in the top right. There's the Hydra in the middle, and then the Minotaurs are like the four around it. And I think the same is true here. The Yergast is the one that our marker is pointing at, and then the, uh, the Phantoms are the four around it. So I think we just want to head over in this direction and we should see another uh, another tower momentarily here there it is and uh, right at the top once again we should find the Yergast. i believe he's right up at the top here there he is again creative flight is probably going to be quite useful for us in this scenario i don't know if i can just attack this guy we might have to fire back his own projectiles at him like you would with a regular guest at the top of the tower, you'll find the Yergast boss and four rooms with ghast traps. To activate them, you'll need to kill Carmenite ghasts near it. Upon activation, it will suck entities above it, so you'll want to wait until the Yergast is above the ghast trap, then activate it. Oh, okay, so we have to activate these Yergast traps. Like this here. This might be made trickier than usual. I think this is the Yergast trap. I think we have to just activate it like this. But uh, it might be trickier, given that he doesn't know that we're here. And also, that doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> to activate them, you'll need to kill Carnamite ghasts near it. Where are the ghasts, though? Hello. There we go. Okay, I think this is active. So the general premise is to, to kill the small ghasts that are near the ghast traps and then activate the ghast trap to deal damage to the main ghast. 
The trouble is that he's not spawning the small guests. I think that's because of our shadow step. If I take that off, there we go. Okay. He knows where we're at. All right. And so now we can head on through and kind of fight these guys to activate this trap and deal damage to him. And if you have... It looks like you can actually deal damage to him with your weapon if he is close enough by. I think this is triggered. We got him. We... Oh, he's so close. Maybe I have to hit the final bits back at him. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think to finish him off here, we have to uh, look him straight in his eyes and hit the, uh, the fireballs back. And there we go. Okay, that took a little longer than I was anticipating. Maybe a lot longer than I was anticipating, but we got there in the end. Did we get a, uh, a trophy? I imagine it's in uh, in here, right? We did. Okay, beautiful. And we got some more fiery tears as well, which is fantastic. We might need the uh, the Carmenite as well. I'm not entirely certain, but we'll put those all away into here. We don't need this much meef, honestly. Uh, we'll put the uh, trophy in here as well. Get rid of that. Okay, so that's that guy taken care of. Now, let's get away from the music that's being played in the background. If we look at the map again, and we look at the quest as well. Uh, oh, we actually get more Fiery Tears for that quest, which is uh, very nice indeed, and for the Hydra as well. Next up is the Alpha Yeti Trophy. The Alpha Yeti can be found in Hollow Snow Hills in the Snow Forest Biome. So I'm assuming that, based on previous trends, over the, the, the quest after this is for the Snow Queen. So I assume on the right there, the Snow Queen is in the middle, and then around the outside are four... Yetis as well. Somewhere around here, we're going to find a Yeti. It said found in Snow Hills. This looks like a big old Snow Hill. I don't know if I've actually fought this guy before. I fought all of the other bosses so far before. But this guy... I have not fought. He does, however, due to the fact that we have insanely powerful armor and a relatively powerful sword, he does seem rather easy to defeat. And uh, just like that, he is gone. Beautiful. Did we get a, uh, another trophy there? We totally did. Fantastic. Uh, again, we'll drop some of the stuff here that we definitely don't need to be carrying around with us. Uh, we did get uh, a bit of slowness by the looks of it there, but that is completely fine. And so now let's go and head through to uh, what might be one of the final bosses, actually. The, uh, the Snow Queen, who is kind of dead ahead here. So this giant blue and green tower is presumably where the Queen is going to hide. And uh, if the rest of the Twilight Forest is anything to go by, presumably she is right at the top. The Twitch chat is telling me that she's inside one of these top pillars. I see that we've activated her bar at the top. There she is. Hello, my friend. She's uh, definitely taking... Oh, and I mean, this looks like it's going to be a fairly easy fight, to be fair. And there we go. All right, chat. I believe <laughs> that due to our vast preparation that we have defeated pretty much all of the Twilight Forest bosses. So next up, it says Magic Beans. It says, in the Twilight Highlands, find a troll cave somewhere around the hill. Inside, you'll find a huge obsidian cube and a smaller one. A huge obsidian cube and a smaller one. Break into the smaller one and get loot from it. Then use the beans and soil to grow a huge tree below a cloud structure. A huge tree below a cloud structure. Okay, so we need to go back to... The Twilight Highlands. Okay, so this biome here, uh, in the top left here, appears to be what we're after. Uh, you'll see it the, on the left there, uh, right here. We're in the Twilight Forest Highlands biome. So, we are looking for... Did it say a troll? Again, this is something that's new to me. I've not done this before. Inside, yeah, we're looking for to find a troll cave. And then inside, it will find a huge obsidian cube with a smaller obsidian cube as well. Okay, so where is this huge obsidian cube? Okay, I think that we have found the giant 
potentially the giant obsidian cube. I'm pretty sure it's this thing right here. So uh, all we did up on the surface, there is a, a cloud in the sky. Uh, I'll show you when we go back up to the surface, but we just dug down beneath that cloud and found this giant, this giant cave. So the quest says to break the smaller cube to get loot from it. So over in here, I assume this is, it's a much smaller cube, but I assume if we break this, it will have the loot that we're after. Okay, so that wasn't the small obsidian cube. Maybe it's this one here. Here we go. This looks more promising. So this has the magic beans that we need. I don't think we need the melons or the mushroom. Then use the beans and soil to grow a huge tree below a cloud structure. Okay, so we're going to head back up to the surface. So this is the cloud I was talking about earlier. Uh, we just dug a straight line down like right there. So now there's already soil here, I guess, right? Yeah, so if we just plant the magic beans. That's going to almost kill us but it builds a beanstalk. So I assume normally the idea is that you can like, if you don't have creative flight, you can kind of just jump and climb your way all the way up this giant beanstalk. And then right at the top, maybe break your way into the cloud. Now it says, before we head through here, it says on the cloud, you'll find you, but a giant one, get a huge pickaxe from you and go back to the huge obsidian cube. Okay, so that sounds a little bizarre, but we'll give it a go. Oh yeah, that is Big Isaac. Hello. Could I, um... Could Small Isaac have a big pickaxe, please? Goodbye, Big Isaac. Um, oh my goodness, that is a massive pickaxe. Giant pickaxe. How big is it? Oh, look at that, it's huge. Okay, so once we've got a giant pickaxe, we can head back to that obsidian cube. And then back down here, supposedly, we can use this giant pickaxe to break this giant obsidian cube. All right. And then inside of it, there's just more beans. I assume there's even more stuff because this is like a very small portion of a, oh no, that's the center of the cube. Wait, is there more on the other side? Oh, I'm a fool. <laughs> the other chest is just behind it. Here we go. So we got more torch berries, which I don't think we need. We got the lamp of cinders, which we do need. We actually need quite a few lamps of cinder because these are actually required going forward in order to, uh, to craft machine frames from RF tools. So like we might need many of these. It's possible we get it back potentially from the craft, but if we don't, we might have to do this a few times, which is fine because we've got the um, the giant pickaxe and I'm assuming that there are uh, at the very least four more lamps in the four kind of caves around, around this castle in the top left here. The Twitch chat is telling me that the lamp doesn't get consumed by the craft, which is gonna be super useful. So now apparently we can use this maybe to burn through here. Yeah, I see. Okay, so you can use these to kind of burn through. Again, I'm assuming we can just fly over because we have uh, creative flight here. Uh, that's the brass casing. And then the final quest, Castle Brick, it says the final boss is not there yet, but you can have these nice blocks now. Castle Brick. So this looks like a Twilight Forest boss that has not yet been implemented, I assume. But uh, what we can do is just go ahead and maybe break one of these blocks. And there we go, chat. We have done it. It took us a while, but as a reward, we get the Ultra Miner Trinket which we can go ahead and I believe just right click. Beautiful, and then we can add it to our trinkets list. And finally, we have managed to acquire the ability to vein mine. So now going forward, we can hold down the Ultimine key. And if we mine something, maybe something that's a little easier to mine, like maybe the stone over here, it should mine out a nice large area of it. Uh, not that it's gonna be particularly useful now going forward, because I don't think we're gonna do a ton of mining uh, in the near future. And there's our pickaxe broken, but more importantly, we have defeated the Twilight Forest progression tree and now have the Lamp of Cinders, which is going to allow us to get involved in some of those uh, RF tools blocks. So I think now it's really time to start looking at the challenges quest line. We've done most of the magic quest line, although there is some Britannia that we are going to have to come back to if we're going to get the uh, creative mana pool. We've done almost all of the storage quest line. There's only a few quests left in here that we've not yet completed, and uh, those are not really necessary quests, even though we could complete them. Uh, the food quest line is one that we're probably not going to finish to completion. From what I can understand, for the most part, this just involves taking seeds, dropping them in water, and getting random seeds back. And then if you get enough random seeds, you complete this quest line. And there's also a bit to make. So I'm probably not going to sweat completing this quest line too, too much. And then the exploration quest line is, of course, the one that we have just completed. And then now there is the challenge quest line. So 
To get into this quest line, we need to first craft the Ultimate Crafter and the Quantum Compressor. So the Ultimate Crafter, I'll go ahead and bookmark, and the Quantum Compressor, I will also go ahead and bookmark. The Ultimate Crafter, I think, is something we're going to want to teach our system to make, because there are quite a few steps involved here, and it's going to be a lot easier to just encode all the patterns and then click Request, as opposed to having to go through all the steps manually. So... Uh, in order to make the ultimate crafter, you need two of the previous tier crafters, the elite crafters. To make each elite crafter, you need two of the previous tier crafters, the advanced crafters. And to make the advanced crafter, you guess that you need two of the basic crafters, which require two regular crafting tables. And then other than that, you just need iron, gold, diamonds, and emeralds, along with each tier of catalyst. That being the ultimate catalyst, the elite catalyst, the advanced catalyst, and the basic catalyst. And also the component version of all of that stuff. So if I type in uh, catalyst into JEI here... We can teach our system how to make the basic component encode and then the basic catalyst encode. And then we can do the exact same thing here for all of the other uh, components and catalysts. Once we have all those, we can go ahead and encode the recipes for the other tables. And then finally, we also need to teach it how to make black iron as well. This is made with iron ingots and a black dye. So we'll dump all of these in here. And then do we have everything we need to make an ultimate crafting table? We do not. We're missing a block of diamond, a block of emerald, 52 black dye, which we can get uh, as we did previously by grinding coal, either in the uh, crushing wheel, like this, uh, or through the uh, through the mill. Uh, for now, we might as well, I think, go ahead and just drop this into the uh, the crushing wheel that we have over here. If we do something like that, that should produce a very large amount of black dye for us, 64 to be exact, which is uh, more than the 52 required. And then all of the other stuff really shouldn't be too difficult. A block of emerald we can make, a block of diamond we can also make. It might have been two blocks of diamond now that I think about it. And then the last thing was luminescence, which is made by crafting two glowstone with a redstone and a gunpowder. And this is where we could kind of run into some problems because we actually don't have glowstone. Like we have some glowstone, nine to be precise and i keep going through to the nether and acquiring a little bit of glowstone to make more of the decorative glowstone blocks that we've been using around the base but we actually don't have a, a consistent supply of glowstone i completely forgot about this recipe from the start of the pack so we can use create to make glowstone which we might do in the near future in like a future stream because a lot of this setup here is now somewhat obsolete one thing that we're probably going to start working on in the next stream is setting up a ton of creative tanks and trying to automate as many resources as we can to get enough resources to start making all of these singularities here. And so at that point, we could probably repurpose these uh, these wheels here to make unlimited glowstone, which might not be too difficult. For now, though, because the create wheels are a little slow and because I don't think you're guaranteed to get a glowstone from every torch, yeah, it's only a 25% chance, uh, the easier way for us to currently get a large amount of glowstone is going to be through Batania. So what we can do here is we can throw redstone dust into a mana pool. If that mana pool has an alchemy catalyst beneath it, that mana pool will then transform that redstone into glowstone dust. And so in order to make the alchemy catalyst, we simply need two brewing stands, which we can do. Of course, in a previous stream, we moved our blazing blood to a creative tank. And so if we just grab another casting table and a regular old fluid pipe, we should be able to set up a relatively permanent uh, casting table with rod cast, which we can then extract from using our wrench. And then what I'll probably do here is grab a chest and also some item pipes, because I think that's going to be faster than utilizing a hopper. And then at that point, we can go ahead and just break this, put this down, place the chest on top of it. We'll make sure to set that to extract first, and boom. And that should be uh, essentially unlimited blaze rods. In fact, we could probably just put a drawer here instead of putting a chest down. If we get rid of this, we can drop a, a storage drawer like that. And this storage drawer will just fill up with, uh, with infinite blaze rods for us to use in the future. For now, though, do we have what it takes to make two brewing stands? We should. We do indeed. We then need one ender pearl that we're going to turn into a mana pearl upstairs. Right now, our Botanic network card is not in the receiver, so none of this stuff is online, which I think for the time being is fine. And now we should have everything we need to make the alchemy catalyst, which we can go ahead and place down, let's say, under this guy. 
And so now if we take some redstone, we can drop it in and we get glowstone. And we can do the same thing with a full stack of redstone here. And it really doesn't use that much mana. So let's go ahead and throw this in. And then let's see, do we have what it takes to make the ultimate crafting table? We don't, we're just missing that black die, which in theory should be somewhere over here. Totally is, nice, let's grab that, put that in the system, and let's request our ultimate crafting table, start and start. That might take a, a second or two, but it shouldn't take too, too long. While we wait for that, the other quest here is to make the quantum compressor. Again, I think this is probably going to be a lot easier if we just teach our system how to make this. It already knows how to make the catalysts. It already knows how to make the black iron and the slits. The only thing it doesn't know how to make is the black iron frame, which now that I look at it is probably not going to be massively easy to automate. And it is going to require a lot more mechanical crafters. Um, I think our system might already know how to make mechanical crafters. Never mind, it doesn't, that's fine. We can go ahead and encode that. We do have 28 of these, uh, and we are gonna have to find an area to put all of these down in, because in order to do this craft, we need 49 of them in total. So the ultimate crafting table is done. For those who don't know, this is essentially just a massive crafting table. So in here, this is a crafting table that can do massive crafting recipes, uh, such as, the one for the ultimate singularity. So the ultimate singularity doesn't use the whole grid. It only uses like the first three rows here, but it does have to be done in this ultimate crafting grid. And uh, in order to make each and every one of these singularities, that is where the quantum compressor comes in. So the way this works is to make a singularity, you have to power the quantum compressor. It does require 5,000 redstone flux per tick. So we are gonna have to look at getting more power to make this happen, even though we do have uh, like infinite power coming from our diesel generator, we only have it coming out at 4,096 redstone flux per tick. It's possible that we might be able to pull more out of here with more flux plugs. I don't think we can. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works, but we could, uh, we could test it. But uh, if not, we can always look at getting more power. There are a bunch of ways of doing that. Even if it's just as simple as making even more diesel generators, we could make that work. Once you have enough power, you then have to place the ultimate catalyst in. I don't believe the ultimate catalyst is used. It just has to be there. And then for every singularity, you have to pump a certain number of items into the quantum compressor of that singularity type. And so in order to make the electrum singularity, we have to pump 5,000 electrum ingots into a quantum compressor with, that's receiving 5,000 red star flux per tick and has the ultimate catalyst inside of it. And then after a certain amount of time, the quantum compressor will transform those electrum ingots into the electrum singularity. From there, uh, we can then of course craft multiple singularities. We need electrum, steel, lapis, uranium. We need quite a few of them, as you can see, to make the ultimate singularity. And then from there, we can start looking at crafting the infinite storage parts and the infinite fluid storage part. Uh, this is going to allow us to make an infinite storage disk, which basically gives us an infinite amount of storage in our refined storage system, which would be nice to have, uh, but again, is mostly for the quest completion here. Then at the bottom of the quest, I think the ultimate singularity is really only used for these two items, or at least that's all the, the quests are for. You can also use it to make compact machine wall, which makes compact machines, but uh, I don't really see us needing that either. Uh, and then down at the bottom, a lot of these creative items just require creative ingots, I believe. So the creative capacitor, for example, which will give you an infinite amount of power, is made using uh, four ultimate catalysts, which are made rather expensively with 81 mechanical crafters. You then need 80 HV capacitors. These are not too tricky, but I think every single one of these HV capacitors has to be fully charged, which is the bit that's a little tricky. Then on top of that, we also need an ultimate catalyst, which requires one luminescence, one black iron slate, and two ultimate ingots. The ultimate ingots, again, are made in the ultimate crafting table. And this is where things can get a little dicey. A lot of this stuff is gonna be super easy because things like iron, gold, uh, netherite, and you know uranium, once we have those, we can melt them, get molten buckets of them, and then use the creative fluid tank to get an infinite number of them. But some of these we can't do that with. Uh, the twilight forest ingots, for example, the iron wood, the fiery wood, and the night metal don't have that option. The hop graphite, I also don't think has that option. So we're gonna have to get maybe a few squeezes and a lot of coke ovens to get that up and running again, uh, which shouldn't be too difficult, to be honest. Most of these, thankfully, are duplicatable. I'm not sure about the ones from Better End Forge. Those also might just require us to get enough of them, potentially. Although it looks like those are just craftable, like this um, Eternium ingot here. I've not actually played with the Better End Forge mod, so I don't know how we get these ingots, but they seem fairly doable. And uh, let's have a quick look. How many ultimate ingots do we need? We need two to make 
You need two to make one ultimate catalyst, then we need four ultimate catalysts to make one creative capacitor. So we need eight ultimate ingots to make the creative capacitor. Then if we're going to make the creative motor, this also requires a creative capacitor. Although to be fair, we can, we don't have to make a new one. We can just use the one that we already have there. So that's actually no more ultimate ingots. And then over on this side, the creative mana pool just requires Gaia ingots. It doesn't actually require any ultimate ingots. So it looks like we actually maybe... Oh no, okay. So it depends if we want to make the creative jetpack or not. This looks like an optional quest because it doesn't point to the you've won quest. So we might not make the creative jetpack. If we wanted to make the creative jetpack, we'd have to get another 10 of the uh, ultimate ingots because we'd need another creative capacitor, which is another eight ultimate ingots with four more here. So we'd need 12 more on top of the initial eight that we needed. So we need 20 in total. That's honestly not terrible. It really depends on how hard some of these other ingots are to get. Getting 20 of each of these Twilight Forest ingots really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, Ironwood, we've already got some of, I believe. We got six. We can go find more in the Twilight Forest. It's not too hard to come by. Uh, the fiery ingots are makeable. Uh, as I mentioned while we were fighting it, uh, the fiery ingots are just iron and fiery blood. We've probably already got enough fiery blood. And if we don't, the uh, quest rewards here do give us more fiery blood that we could potentially use to uh, to push us over the edge. So we might be able to make the creative jetpack. It really depends on how hard it's going to be. Uh, the everlasting mana pool is just a bunch of mana, really, and some runes and then the Gaia spirits. We are going to have to fight the Gaia, but I don't think that's going to be too bad. All of these mana pools do have to be full. So that is a lot of mana that we're going to have to get. Uh, but that seems very doable. Uh, we're not going to complete this quest because this quest is silly. This is way too much food. This would take me a trillion streams to do. Like, we're just going to skip over that one. Uh, the storage parts here are mostly going to be uh, just a case of doing a ton of auto crafting because there's just a lot of parts here, right? To make the infinite storage part, you need three 1,048 million storage parts. And then each one of those requires uh, the previous tier and the previous tier and the previous tier and the previous tier and the previous tier, all the way down to the 1k storage parts. We're going to need a ton of silicon, a ton of iron, a ton of redstone, a ton of glass. So uh, we might even make multiple, you know, uh, rainbow furnaces to try and make that a bit faster, but that should be doable. And at that point, then there's just the Mine Colonies quest. It says, build Mine Colonies Town Hall level five. I have not played with Mine Colonies at all. I have no idea how we do this, but I'm assuming this is probably gonna be the trickiest part for me because I've not done it before, but I'm sure we can figure out how it works and try and see if it's, uh, if it's at all doable. But for the most part, this is a very doable, I think, challenge quest line. Some mod packs like to go crazy with the end game and have just like ridiculous quests that are nigh impossible to complete. But a lot of this stuff seems very, very doable. Moving back over to the quantum compressor here, which I think is the last thing we'll do today. We need 49 of these. We've got 28, so we need 11 more. Once we have them, the tricky part is going to be finding a place to put them. We need a 7x7 seven seven, like wall to put them down on. To be fair though, the area in here is probably perfect for it actually. If we get rid of this, we do already have shaft power in here, which we can make faster of course. But uh, we might just want to go ahead and do something like this if we do one two three one two three this is taking me right back to the beginning of the pack when we did this for the first time but now we need to build out this seven by seven wall of mechanical crafters okay so using some cogwheels and some shaft let's see if we can't get this to work i think we can probably just pull from here it might not be the best idea because it might be a little slow but if we do that it's overstressed okay so let's turn this down i'm gonna turn this right down it's gonna be slow but we'll turn it down and see what it's at. Now it's at four kinetic stress units. Is that still overloaded? No, that is fine. Okay, that might take like 300 years, but this in theory should work. So if we get our wrench and we use the wrench to, to point these all in a certain direction, we'll do the exact same thing we did at the start of the pack. We'll have kind of everything uh, coalesce on uh, this final chest right here. And I think this is good to go, actually. All the rest of these do already point kind of down in straight lines to this bottom line here. So all we really need to do now is get all of this stuff in and then if we've done that correctly which i think we have the the texture change there we should start to see things slowly but surely making their way to the uh, to the chest there now it's at this point in time that we could probably switch things up a little bit here honestly like uh, if we just disconnect some of these shafts temporarily that should give us more kinetic power like we don't need these wheels online right now uh, we could probably go ahead and try bumping this up to be a little faster. Like if we try going for four, that's going to be twice as fast. Is that uh, not overstressed? It's not overstressed. These are all using eight 
kinetic stress units. I don't know if that's eight for the entire thing or if it's just eight for the... Um, if it's eight per crafter, that's a lot of stress. If it's eight for the whole multi-block, that's not much stress. Let's try 16 again. Someone said it's eight per. That seems like a lot. It is per crafter. Okay, interesting. That's fine. Let's go ahead and lower this back down. 12. 8. 8 seems to be working. Okay, how fast are we uh, How fast are we going? We're going pretty quickly, actually. Now, in terms of making a lot of singularities, which we're going to have to do to make the ultimate singularity, we might want to make multiple quantum compressors, so we're probably going to want to do this craft a couple of times over. And, of course, if we're going to complete this craft right here for the uh, creative uh, for the creative capacitor, we're going to have to set up even more mechanical crafters, and it's almost certainly going to be in our best interest to uh, to make this much faster. So we'll look at either making this windmill just insanely big, uh, this one back here, or we'll potentially look at some of the other uh, create power generation systems, because there are a ton of them available to us that, uh, that we can use, and they're not going to be too difficult for us to set up that we can then use to make this significantly faster. Either way, this is done. We have the blank iron frame. And so if we drop that in the system, do we have what it takes to craft the quantum compressor? I think we do, just as soon as we teach our system how to actually make that quantum compressor. Encode. And we're out of space in here, actually, which is fine. We can go ahead and just request another crafter. Again, it might well be worth just teaching our system how to make the higher tiers of crafter. I know right now it knows how to make the basic crafter, but if we teach it iron and gold and diamond and then netherite, it should be able to do that. Again, I think it's going to need to be taught how to make a lot of these blocks here. And we are going to have to somewhat counterintuitively take some crafting recipes out of our current crafter to make space for the new crafting recipes that we're going to put in. So let's take out some of these catalyst recipes and replace those with these new recipes. I think that's right. Can you make me a netherite crafter? You can. Start. All right, that did take a minute, but we do now have a another netherite crafter. Let's go ahead and drop this down on top of our pre-existing netherite crafter, like so. Then we can drop all of these recipes back in. Not that we're really going to need these catalysts, I don't think, going forward, but having them around is not going to hurt us. And finally, let us go ahead and request the quantum compressor start and start. It really shouldn't take too long, and boom, there we go. We have our first quantum compressor. So, next time, chat, we'll come back. Uh, between streams, I might go ahead and request quite a few creative fluid tanks. We've got one, but we're going to need a bunch of them, like at least one for each uh, ingot that we need to make here. So I'll look at requesting those between streams and getting those ready. I'll also try and set up a space uh, for those as well, so that next time we can come back, we can set up all of the creative fluid tanks, start getting all those ingots, and really just start working on this challenge questline, seeing if we can't start getting some of our creative items.